Hey everybody, welcome to the third video on strings. And in this section, what I'm gonna do is a quick example where we're going to look at a palindrome. So a palindrome is a sequence that is the same forward as backwards. And you actually find that palind like doing a function or writing code to check whether a string or even a number is a palindrome is actually pretty common in a lot of computer science or programming courses. So it's, it's basic string manipulation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually write a short bit of code that tests if a string is a palindrome or not. Okay. And to do that, we're gonna use loops and we're going to use uh, some of the access stuff that we've looked at before and then we're gonna use one of the methods uh, that will help us uh, in order to determine if it's something is a palindrome, regardless if it is capital or lowercase. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we need to do first, which is create our variable. So I'm going to go ahead and make a variable called pal, and I'm going to make this a palindrome. So a palindrome might look like this. So in this case, Starting at H, if I were to read this, I'd get house, and then I'd get house backwards. And then if I started here and I read this, I'd get house, and then I'd get house backwards. Depending on if you read from left to right, or right to left, it's exactly the same thing. Now, another thing that would also be a palindrome could be something like this. And you notice how in the last one I had two E's in the middle, and this one, Apple, shares the E. So it doesn't really matter if something is a perfect mirror image or if the number, if it's an odd number of characters or even number of characters, as long as it reads the same from start to finish, it's a palindrome. If we wanted to know if something is a mirror image of itself like this, apple apple, that's a whole different test. So a palindrome is not the same as a mirror image of a character, of a character string. It is just if it can be read the same forward as it can be backwards, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, think about how we might solve the question of, is the variable pal a palindrome or not? Well, to, to know if it's a palindrome or not, what we probably wanna do is, we probably want to take a look at the first and the last character to begin with. So I would say the last, let me make some characters, let's use a dollar sign for this, and then um, maybe percent sign for that. So I would look at these two, and then what I would do is each time I would move closer towards the middle, okay? And as I move closer, I would check each time if the characters are the same or not. And then once I get to the middle, both these will be on top of each other, and I would have E. And once I get to this point, I don't have to check anything else because I already checked the first half and I already checked the second half. All right, so in this case, that's pretty much what we want to do and it should tell us if it's a palindrome or not. And to do that, we're gonna need something that keeps track of us looking at the first letter and something that keeps track of us looking at the last letter. So to do that, I'm gonna write this in a, probably the longest way but it would be the most readable way. So I'm gonna say start index is equal to zero, and then I'll say the end index is equal to the length of pal. And this is almost correct, but not quite. Uh, we need to remember that length is gonna give this string, in this case, as nine. But in actuality, the last index is eight because it starts at zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I need to do is minus one. So just to prove my point here, I'm gonna print both of these, and you can see that that's zero and eight, and if I were to print them at their particular index, okay, end index, you get A and A. So starting off, everything looks good, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, create a loop to do this. Uh, I'm not going to use a for loop in this case, uh, but later on I, I'm going to show you how you could write this a little bit better. And there's actually a, 
a whole bunch of ways you can do this. Uh, but in this case, I'm just writing it, as I said, the longest possible way. So I'm going to say while start index is greater or sorry, less than or equal to end index. And each time I do this loop, I'm going to check if pal start index, just like I just shown, if, if it's not equal to the uh, pal end index, then I want to break. Okay. So in this case, it's going to keep looping through and it's going to be checking if these are not equal or if they are equal. If they're not equal, then that means we know we no longer have a palindrome, so we need to break out of this loop. Okay. Uh, but if it is, if they are equal, I want to check the next character. So I need to say start index plus equals one and end index minus equals one. And uh, when it's finally all said and done, I will check if the start index is greater than or equal to the end index. So that means if the thing that was keeping track of the, the character at the start has now moved past the center, so moving back up here to my uh, percent sign and dollar sign, these come in and they now move past each other and now they're they're getting farther apart each time like, oh, like that then this will be true and that means if I've already gone and checked all the characters that means it's a palindrome and I haven't broken the loop yet so then I would print a palindrome yeah palindrome appears okay, but if I haven't if for whatever reason that it's not a palindrome, then I need to print not a palindrome. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's go over this one more time. I set my indexes for the start and the last index of the string. Then, with each time it goes through, it's going to check as long as the start index hasn't gone past the end index or it's not equal to, they're not looking at the middle E or anything like that, then check. If this character is equal, not equal to this character, then I'm going to break. So I break out of the loop, and it's going to say not a palindrome. But if they are the same, then do this, start an index, and then go back to the start of the loop, and then come back in and check again. And then if so, keep adding and keep subtracting until eventually both of the indexes meet in the middle, meet in this case at E, they're going to meet at the middle, and then the loop will end. And if that's true, if they've met in the middle and it's never broken once, then that means it's palindrome. And if they have broken before they met in the middle, that means it's not a palindrome. So let's run this and we get palindrome appears because this is a palindrome. And even if I put uh, double E here in the middle, it's still going to say a palindrome appears. And if I put a 1 here, still a palindrome. But now, if I put a 2, it's not a palindrome anymore. Because the 1 and the 2, when it gets to this middle part, says 1 is not equal to 2. And I could do this and make it, and move it, uh, once again, not a palindrome. Uh, I could do maybe this. That makes it a palindrome again or put a three in the middle, it's a palindrome again. Uh, if I put something like this on the end, an extra A, it's not a palindrome. Okay, so pretty easy thing to check for a palindrome. And this code here, though, is actually probably not the best way to do this. Uh, so you can, honestly, you can shorten this a whole bunch. You don't need something for start and for, for end index at all. You can use a for loop to do this, and it will work just the same. So I'm actually, I just want to tell you that you can use a for loop. You don't need these extra variables, and you can shorten this code to about half of what it is. And if you're really clever, if you look at some of the really clever ways to do this, there are people that have done this in a single line of Python. So it is actually possible to write all this code in pretty much a single line not including the variable itself. Okay, so all this code down here 
can almost be done in one line of code. It's not a pretty looking line of code, but it's not really readable rather, but it still can be done. So take a look at some of the practices and I'm going, one of the practice problems will be changing this code into something that uses a for loop instead of a while loop. So practice that, uh, maybe post your answer on the website or even in the YouTube comment section or post something for a code snippet, uh, like code paste or use whatever you want just to share what you've done with other people. Okay, uh, so if you have questions on this, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, there was one thing, oh, sorry, one thing I wanted to add in here. If these characters, for example, are capitalized, let me go back to the simple version. For like, I make A capitalized, but this A is not. A very short, quick fix to make sure that no matter if it's capital or not, it will check. As long as it's an A, that's all that matters. You can really just say pal is equal to pal dot lower. So even though, see this will say it's a palindrome, but if I took this line out, it will say not a palindrome. So by using the lower or the upper even, it can check if it doesn't matter if the, if the letters are upper or lowercase, it will do it regardless. It will tell you if it's a palindrome. Okay, sorry for that last little bit. Uh, as I said before, comments, YouTube, or on the website. So uh, go ahead, do the practice, post your stuff up, and I will see you soon for some more Python. Thanks for watching.